Okay, so the Raspberry Pi 4 is incredibly difficult to get hold of, and we've just found out that it's probably going to be a year before stock is back to before COVID levels. Uh, it's not that hard to get hold of a high-end SBC. So the VIM 4, which sells for £219, 8 gig of RAM, really powerful, really, really nice device, uh, but also the incredibly powerful Edge 2 Pro, uh, which sells for £310, uh, is... Uh, an extremely powerful device with 16 gig of RAM, capable of 8K video, uh, but not everybody needs that. So if your needs are more modest, the VIM1 may be the answer. So the VIM1 basic you can see here is 5199. It comes with a quad core processor, two gig of RAM and eight gigabytes of eMMC storage. But I've got the VIM1S, which is 5999 which has double the eMMC storage. So we've got 16 gig, same RAM, uh, but it also has better Wi-Fi because it supports Wi-Fi AC. So we've got two gigahertz quad core and also integrated graphics up to 850 megahertz. Now the hardest thing about setting up a catalyst board is getting it out of the box. The lids are always really tight on them. So I plugged in all my cables, ethernet, full size HDMI, five volt USB-C, and also this is my mouse keyboard for my Logitech keyboard. So let's switch it on and see what it does on first boot. So we've got the UWOW logo. So it boots into the wizard and at the moment it's using less than a watt, so super low power. So let's hit continue. I could do network, but I'm using an ethernet cable, so I'm not gonna bother. And now it gives us a list of the operating systems that we can install to the 16 gig inbuilt drive. So we've got Android 11, you can see there's three versions here. And then we've got Ubuntu GNOME and also server. I'm gonna start off with Ubuntu, I think. So all the information comes up on the screen, 832 megabytes, so let's hit download and come back when that's all done. Okay, so that finished, so I've hit install and it's just unpacking onto the eMMC drive. Okay, that's finished, now it wants to reboot, so let's hit reboot and reboot again. So that's now booting up Ubuntu. So I've logged in and I've installed PSensor to see how hot it gets because I have been sent a heatsink, but I wanted to use it without the heatsink first of all because it doesn't come with a, a heatsink as standard. Uh, so let's do Control alt t I've already done sudo apt update and upgrade, so it's all up to date. Uh, and I've already installed NeoFetch just to show you uh, what it's running. So Ubuntu 2204.1. Desktop resolution is running at 1080. I'm going to drop that to 720 because... On a low-end board, you don't really want to be running a desktop at 1080, especially uh, Ubuntu. Ubuntu isn't the lightest of operating systems, and I was—I figured I'd try maybe installing a different graphical user interface because it's, it's just going to perform better. You can see the processor is running at 2 gig, and it's using 967 megabytes of its 2 gig of RAM. Let's change the password, P-A-S-S-W-D, and uh, CADUS is the current one. And let's put in a new one and confirm. There you go, so that's a bit more secure. Now, if we have a look at the apps down here, you can see various different things installed. Uh, LibreOffice is on there. We've got Gparted. Uh, we've got something for cameras. We've got fan controls on here as well. A media player. Synaptic Package Manager, I'm going to use that in a minute because there's no web browser on this and we've got transmission for downloading torrents and there's PSensor. This is the only thing I've installed. So let's go back, go to Synaptic Package Manager and do a search for Chromium. Yeah, it definitely is a bit slow in Ubuntu. We need to lighten that up. In fact, I'm going to lower the resolution already. So display settings and drop that down to 720. And we could drop this down to 50 hertz help it a little bit and apply. I'm going to keep those changes. It already feels a bit faster. Uh, so that, that one thing is definitely a change worth doing. So Chromium browser, let's click on that and mark for installation and apply and apply. So it's a couple of days later. I've been playing around with the system. I did spend quite a lot of time trying to enable Z-Swap because I did a video quite recently uh, about running on a two gig Raspberry Pi 4 and Z-Swap definitely made a big difference on that. I've also done videos on Z-RAM which is basically, uh, it's a way of speeding up devices with low levels of RAM. So you can see here, I've just clicked on all these things to, to start them up. Uh, if I go into terminal, 
Uh, I didn't really need to worry about Z-Swap because Z-RAM is already enabled uh, and is up and running. I'm not sure if this happened at some point while I was uh, applying the updates and newer versions of Ubuntu uh, support Z-RAM, but uh, it's, it definitely seems to work a lot better now. And uh, it's actually quite a nice unit to use. If I just close some of these things down and, uh, well, let's just show you LibreOffice Writer. So you can see I can type away. I can insert an image. And if I go, oh, why does it go to my documents? I would rather it went to uh, images. I go home. Cadas. This would be a lot quicker if it went straight to the images. Yeah, this image is a 720 image. You can see it imported that pretty quick. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think I think overall it feels pretty snappy for a two gig device. I was pretty impressed with it. So I'm not going to save that. Let's go to the web browser and launch a few pages. So Hot UK Deals. Uh, and let's launch BBC. And I guess we'll go for the CADUS page. Because actually CADUS has quite a lot of support on their page. I mean, they're not to the level of Raspberry Pi. I mean, the documentation on Raspberry Pi is, is unbelievable. But uh, but CADUS actually does a pretty good job. Uh, so if we go to Vim series, you'll get various different things on the different boards. So if I click on Vim... These are quite rich web pages, so there's a lot of information on these, quite a lot of high-res images. But if I click on the Vim 1S uh, and you scroll down through, it talks about all the specs and things like that. But uh, near the bottom, uh, oh, and there was something worth mentioning, which was the speed of the EMMC drive. So uh, the EMMC drive in this, the 16 gig one in the Vim 1S, is much faster than the Vim 1, and I'm going to do a speed test on that drive anyway to see how fast it is, but yeah, it's, uh, so if you are looking between the two boards, it's worth spending the extra £8 for that better Wi-Fi, more storage, but faster storage, because running an operating system on faster storage is definitely much better. Uh, you can see at the moment, there's not loads of operating systems at the moment, they will come more in the future, because actually if you look at the Vim 1, you've got... Arch Linux, Lacquer is on there, which is RetroArch, and also there was Libre Elect, which is a, a media center as well. So quite a lot of support on there. And here, look, if we go to, for instance, Docs, so we open that in a new tab, and we go to the forum, and the download section, and oh, I haven't even looked at the GitHub yet. So where have we got here? So this is the page we're on, so let's close that one down. Uh, so Vim 1S, yeah, things like uh, OS images, I mean, you've seen there's only two at the moment, but also they do third-party images on their site. So if we go to the Vim 1, uh, because that's been out longer, and you go to OS images, then, yeah, here we are, LibreLec, Coralec, Manjaro, ARM. So you've got a bit more choice on an old device, and this is always the case when a new SBC comes out, it has less support. Uh, and then over time, that obviously grows. And here we've got some... Uh, various different questions on the forum about the Vim 1S, uh, and yeah, all sorts of things in here. Uh, yeah, really, I was I was quite impressed with the level of documentation. It's not the same with every SBC. Uh, as I say, Raspberry Pi is the best for, for documentation, but uh, CADIS isn't lacking on it. Now, if we go back here and go Hot UK Deals, and just load that up and scroll up and down, you can see that it, it's not struggling at all. And it, it was, first of all, it definitely was. Um, and uh, I'm not sure if ZRAM comes in later on, or it was also when you first started up, it came up with quite a lot of uh, red checks when the, the text is showing up. They don't show up anymore, so obviously whatever needed updating has been updated. So let's go for YouTube and have a look at that. So I just skip the ad there, and uh, let's go for... So it started at 2.40. Let's go with 7.20. I better get rid of the audio because I'm not sure if that was going to be coming over what I'm saying. So now if we go full screen at 7.20. You can see it's dropping a little bit. Let's put stats for nerds on. So 88 frames dropped. Has it sorted itself out? 
it's still dropping at 720. It's weird, at different times, uh, it will play 720 absolutely fine in Ubuntu. Uh, maybe it's sorted itself out now. 111. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be going up. Not perfect, but maybe a lighter graphical user interface might help with that, be using less RAM. So I played around trying to get some different graphical user interfaces in, and uh, just to show you if I switch to all apps, Every time you install a different graphical user interface, it often gives you more apps, so you can see there's loads and loads of things in here. But if I log out by clicking here, you can see that I can click on the login and I can put my password in and then click on the bottom part here and switch between various different desktops, but I can't get any of the others to work. Uh, Gnome Classic works, but uh, that was already on there. But things like Cinnamon, uh, KDE Plasma, Ubuntu Mate, XFCE, I've tried LXQT, uh, I've tried all of the ones I could find in Task Cell and none of them boot for some reason. Uh, I guess it must just have the components to work with this but usually on the Pi and usually on uh, an X64 device you just install it and it seems to work. Obviously it's a bit more of a bespoke system to work with this. If I go for Gnome Classic it did actually use a little bit less RAM. It does seem to be using a little bit less RAM, but there's not much in it. So let's go with the super light system that is Android. So if I press the middle button and then the end button, that will reboot into UWAL, and we can go through and install Android to it. So I guess I'll try the most recent one. So let's download that, 525 megabytes. And here's Android 11 with the Google Play Store already installed, but I'll show that in another video. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.